today I will show you the basics of PhotoP. I am Carl Coach with FX, coaching you to exceed your potential in graphic design. Today I will show you what to do when loading up PhotoP for the first time. Let's do this. If you haven't already, subscribe with the notification set to all and like the video. So the first thing you have to do is go to photop.com and click new project. This is the start of everything. It would take an infinite amount of time to go through everything you can do on Photop. But we're just going to be making a thumbnail after I've taught you the basics of sort of a wrap up. Um, so for the thumbnail size, I'd choose 1280 by 720, but you can do anything in that aspect ratio of 16 by 9. For a YouTube banner, I have other videos on them, so they'll be linked in the description if that's what you're looking for. The first, click the icon on the click the first icon on the left and click on auto select and transform controls because this will make your experience so much better on Photop. And I see so many people not clicking them, and it, you know they're taking longer, and it's just making everything take ages. So a few thing, key things, it's a rectangle selection tool, so this will help you select areas in the rectangle you draw. We might we might not use everything today, but these are the features I use the most. Also the polygonal lasso tool, it's just where you select multiple points and Photop makes exactly straight lines to them. So this is really useful and easy to learn. It's sort of a basic version of the pen tool. So I use pen tool now and I'll have a video on that coming up within sort of the first quarter of 2021. But I just thought we'll put this in because it's basically the same and it helps select and stuff that is an irregular shape. The brush tool is going to be very useful to you. It's going to help your paint colours add like shadows and highlights and even on the raster masks that we're not going to go into today because they're a bit more complex. The eraser tool removes what is on the layer that you've selected. It can remove pictures and the brush and everything. It's really, really useful. So the text tool is just a bit uh, further down. This is quite simple. You can type text, you can change the font and change loads to do with the text. I'll have something coming on that. So now the left hand side is done, on for the right section. You can see right here your history and, and to go back it's just like other normal processes so control or command Z I want to say on Mac. Not too sure with Mac OS. Below that you can see three options layers, channels and paths. Layers is the only one we're going to be focusing on today as this is a beginner's guide, not an advanced guide. So you don't really need to look at the other two. So here you can see the blend mode that there'll be. When you create a new layer, it'll be on normal from the get-go. Then you have the opacity. So 100%, it's not transparent at all. And then at 0%, it, you can't see that layer. So that's how you do it. So if it if the image has transparent areas on it, then that will obviously be transparent, but we'll see that in just a second. That will also be at 100. The full also does a similar thing, but it doesn't affect the like strokes and drop shadows on an object. So that is, that can be really, really useful sometimes. So yeah, we'll get in, maybe we'll do some of that and we'll see. Below the E, you have the layers and this is super easy. The ones on the top will appear above the others and if it, the eye is off, then it's not visible. If it's on, then it'll be visible and then with all the other blending options. So you have a few buttons at the bottom. So you have uh, one for deleting a layer and one for adding a layer the half circle so it's half white half black is adjustments layers this helps a lot when doing brightness and contrast on rusted images so you can go back and tweak it and change it so now that right hand side is done we'll go all the way back up to the top 
and depending on what you want and what you're gonna do will depend what like filters or what things you're gonna need up here so I'll go over a few that I find the most use as it does vary a lot edit tab allows you to flip something horizontally and vertically so that's really really good and if you didn't have the transform control selected this is where you're gonna go to enable free transform but there's no need to do that because we've already saved ourselves tons of time at the start image tab will let you resize a canvas if that's what you need but usually I know what size I'm going for from the get-go so I don't find that too useful now the filter tab is very very useful and I spend a lot of time in this tab it's got a lot more advanced techniques so it's a beginner's guide I'm not gonna go over too much of it but if you want to see sort of an intermediate photo P guide then let me know down below and I will show it you and like the video and watch all of it too so in here I often use blur especially with my banners uh, at the top and at the bottom I blur them so on TV they still look good and for this I use Gaussian blur but if you want to look like something's moving you can use motion blur and there's loads so it depends what blur you want on which one you use. Sharpness is also very useful. This allows the image to keep its quality even at a small size. But don't use it overly heavily. You don't always need the max amount of sharpness on there, just a little bit to sharpen it up and it looks even better. I know you all want to know the perfect settings in Photopea or Photoshop or designing in general. From what I've learned, it's all about testing and trial and error. So I'll be giving you some examples just coming up in a minute in the thumbnail, but feel free to experiment, change the sliders, get used to what they all do, and leave your best settings in the comment section below. I'm interested in which one of you will come up with the next best settings. So this finally leads on to a really nice point, which is our last one, which is layer style. So go to the layer you want to apply a layer style to and double click on it. This will bring up the layer styles box. You can add anything here, not anything, but you can add a lot such as drop shadows, strokes and gradient. If you do have drop shadows or strokes and there might be some more, you can actually add multiple of them so you can create like loads and loads of different strokes or loads of different drop shadows and that can make your text feel a little bit more personalized and a bit more custom and a lot more unique. So now you've learned this area, let's put it all into use. So now I'll make the thumbnail I'm using for this video so you can see how I've done these effects and taken my design to this level. The first thing I want you to do is get a background that can be stark or you've made your own or whatever. Uh, so for this I've used the Plextra background and go to the adjustment tab which is that half circle filled in half just with the line and click on brightness and contrast. Here you can adjust the brightness and the contrast. So my background I've used negative 63 brightness and plus 68 contrast. But feel free now to pause and experiment with this. I want to add some artificial light. So create a new layer then go to the brush tool and then at the top click the circle and it'll be a circle anyway so put the size right the way up to the max at a thousand and the hardness right the way down to the, the to zero keep the blend mode on the brush normal but we'll change the layer for it and opacity 100 uh, same with the flow and smooth on zero percent now click a few times at the top of your screen and it's going to create this white lighting effect. Change this to overlay and the opacity to around 50% and you're going to get this really nice sort of artificial light and it helps create depth. Now change the colour to black and do this on three three sides on another layer. So you need to create a new layer um, and put this on blender mode overlay and the opacity around 48% that's one I'm using anyway so the next thing I want is blur so for this I'll be using Gaussian blur of about five pixels is good for me here make sure to extend the image 
as the blur lowers the opacity at the edges so you probably just want to drag it over the edge so you don't see any transparent edges you just need to click on the image to you need to click on the image to bring up the box the boxes on the edge of the image and then it's just like a Microsoft application and you drag it you can hold shift to keep it in the correct aspect ratio now above the adjustment layer you've created press control and backspace or command backspace if you're on Mac OS this will make it fill in one color and it's not going to look the best but just bear with me now go to layer style so you can double click on the layer Set the position to inside as when you first load it up, it'll probably be on outside. So change it to inside. Keep the blend mode at normal and the opacity at 100%. Change the color to white or black. Personally, I pick black and click OK. Now on this layer, change the fill to zero and you've got a black border. Now lower the opacity, I'm going to go for around 42% and you get this custom dynamic awesome looking border. On the top I'm typing out photo P beginners, I will go to text effect and go to colour overlay. Now make sure the blend mode is normal and the opacity is at 100% and have a colour like an orange. Next go to inner shadow and has a blend mode of normal get a darker colour so I've picked this up orangey browny colour make the opacity 100% angle 30 distance 2 spread 100% and size 2 leave the noise on 0 now go to drop shadow uh, blend mode will be normal colour will be black and opacity at 100% Angle will be at 30, distance at 0. Spread at 100%, and size at 5. Leave everything else, and go to the plus to add a new drop shadow. Have these settings, except the colour should be purple, and the size of 7, not 5. So you just can have an extra so a bit on the outside. Now I'm adding more text, I'm writing guide and I'm putting this at the bottom in the centre. Then I'm going to open up layer style, so find the layer, double click on it and I'm going to add an inner shadow of light purple, blend mode normal and opacity at 100%. The angle will be at 30, distance at 2, the spread will be 100, size of 2. Now I'll add a stroke of a darker purple around 7 pixels with the position being outside. Not inside this time. Then I will add in the middle the photo P logo. So I've just got this. Um, there are photo P logos online but this one's custom. I've filled it in in white so it looks better in my opinion. So if you have any questions about what I've covered or even what I haven't covered, please put them in the comments and I will respond and if it's big enough and or complex enough it needs a video, I'll make a video on it as soon as I can. Of course, I haven't gone over everything in Photop and this beginner's guide wasn't for that. So I might do a uh, like the next stage where I teach a few more things soon but as I said I don't really want to overwhelm you but please make sure you like subscribe share and I will see you in next week's video on how to make an album cover